Hey, good morning, everybody. This is the Next Level Racing HF8 Heptic Seat. Basically, it's a four-speed back seat cover. There's a few other reviews on, out on this. I don't do any truck or car simulations games, but I'm pretty much strictly with DCS World. And I've tried Microsoft Flight Sim a few times, but I'm still more into the role play of the combat simulation. So anyways, I thought this would be something good to take a look at. So what I'm going to do is a quick unboxing. Oh, and before we continue on, I've been trying to remember at the beginning of my videos to please ask you to give me a thumbs up, a like, a sub. All of it's free. None of it hurts. And if you want to leave a comment, feel free. I always read every comment and I always get back to anybody that has a question. So let's get on with it. Like I said, this is going to be a very quick unboxing. An unboxing, it's just a box, no big deal. Let's see how everything is. The pack, it came in double box. There was another brown cardboard box on this. So the boxing itself seemed to be very solid. It's not as light as I thought it would be. And it comes with a couple of tabs on it. Okay, what do we have here? It's probably a box with the wires in it. Oh, yeah. Oops. A power cable. It looks like we have, I dropped one of them. 12 volt power adapter. Oh, okay, here's the American, North American style. I'm not sure which is which. When I was in Asia, I'm not sure. I think this was the one we use. I got another one that just fell on the floor. We'll find that later. Okay. So here, see how they bagged it up, which is nice. Lose a little bit of the picture here, the video. This is gonna go on the other chair, not this, this chair. This one I just use. It's a more comfortable chair and I use this one for like longer terms when I'm sitting down at the computer doing video editing and whatnot. Okay, this obviously is the back. And this is the pot that you would sit on. Wow. What up with that? That's nice. It's bigger than I thought. Oh, I can feel those those pucks. Oh, they give a heck of a manual here. I imagine there's a whole bunch of different languages. Next Level hasn't made, with their program, their application that comes with this, they haven't made the DCS app that goes with their app, or the DCS function that goes with their app that, that operates this. But there are some other companies that do. You can plug it directly in to either a USB or I think you, I would have to use, if I went directly into sound, I would have to use a 3.5, the auxiliary. But there's also some other sim simulation programs that you can install on the computer that will work with this. Make it very, very close to working the way that it, it would be with the um, with the next level next app. Next level was supposed to release it a couple days ago, the DCS up, update for their application. Um, they listed it as quarter two. Hopefully they'll be releasing it shortly. I'm gonna send them an email and ask them what the story is with that, if there's gonna be, because let's face it, DCS has a large, large community. And I don't know why they, are taking so long. I don't know if Microsoft Flight Sim has a larger community. I know DCS is huge, so they're losing money. They're losing money, money in their pocket. Wow. Wow. I seen some other chairs, like the next level chair that this was used on, and the back part is about where I expected it to be. The bottom part where you sit down at that looks longer than what it used to be. I don't know if they made it bigger. I don't think so. Well, that's okay. It fits almost perfect. It goes right to the end. Other ones I've seen, it kind of fell short on the seat. All right, I'm going to get this hooked up. I guess you don't want to watch me run these straps all over the place and get it snapped in there. So we'll be back when, when I get the application in. And I'll give you more of a 
review on on what the force feedback feeling is like and was it worth it okay we're back anyways I hooked up the seat I, I tried it without without putting the straps on because that's what I've seen in a few of the videos and then I tried it with the straps on and it feels better with the straps when it's more secure to the seat just my opinion does it work absolutely I went back on to next level racing and of course I double checked to see if they had done the upgrade and they haven't but I'm sure they will uh, maybe there's just more to it than what they initially thought so I hooked it up to the other application which is called I think it's something sim shaker and that works good I had to do a little bit of adjusting well actually a lot of adjusting because when I first turned it on it was way more powerful than what I anticipated it, it was pretty cool it, it does give you that extra immersion that like okay literally when I'm flying and I fire a missile off if the missile comes off the left wing you feel a pounce and a little vibration just basically whether you want to have it on 50 percent 20 percent or 100 percent is the amount of feel you're going to force feedback you're going to get but literally on the left or the right side wherever shot comes off of the the launch you you feel it it's it's cool g-force you pull back and your lower back part will start to give a different kind of shocking let me see vibrating feel that goes fluctuates in and out from side to side whether it's notching to the left or the right it, it it's cool with that app i also tried it by just plugging it into just the sound and it does work but basically what you're getting is it's like kind of like a a full body stereo everything kind of works together which kind of defeats the whole purpose of getting isolated areas of your back and body your lower body to, to have the feeling that you're in a plane okay so that's my review on this other than the i, I want to touch base on it, it, it it's weird because most of the seats i've seen it go on it fell shorter I took the back piece out from my chair and it still kind of hangs over a little bit, but you know something? A lot of the people that were saying that it came up shorter on their seat, they were complaining of it getting hot and causing some numbness in, in their, their hamstring area. With this, I kind of like, when my knee bends, it kind of like folds over a little bit and it gives my legs and my upper calf even the feel of the flight simulation, which Maybe it was a benefit on my part. It works with the upper back, lower back, middle back, uh, buttocks area, thighs and calves for me. It, it, it's awesome, I love it. It's not like a butt kicker where basically what you're feeling is just thumps. It doesn't work like that. But I think if one was added to this, it would probably complete the, the, the feel of the force feedback that you would be looking for of course you know the seat doesn't move like those five thousand dollar things that flip you all over the place I, i'd probably get sick on the thing but anyways definitely works i hope somebody from next level racing sees this video i'll probably even send it to them but please i, I hope you get this app complete with DCS because it's a huge audience and I think it would be a great sell. I, I am going to give this thing a, like a straight up one out of 10. I'll give it a hundred. This thing's awesome. Love it. The build quality is great. On the back, it has like a pretty heavy duty nylon with lots of padding. On the front part where it has the H HF8. I'm not sure if I can see. Okay. Yeah, that part's in there. It has, it's basically an artificial leather covering. It has, it's perforated to allow it good breathing so it won't get sweaty and clammy, hopefully. This will allow moisture to es escape. The cable is very heavy. I mean, there's no problem with that. The box, the control box is like a rubber covered so it's protected. But everything that it needs, it's, it's top of the line. It's, they didn't skimp, it's not cheap. Even when you pause it, you can see the red light starts to blink. So I have DCS on right now, and I'm gonna touch base on a little something else. I might make this a two-part video. 
All right, so we're gonna leave it at that, and I'm gonna do a short video that I'm probably gonna put up afterwards regarding the Win Wing Top Gun display panels. Okay, so here we are, back with DCF. Right now, the Top Gun set up for a, a little bit. Reason being, I was having problems with getting good power going to the USBs. I solved that problem. It cost a few dollars. I bought an internal and a very good external USB hub. The internal one that goes into, to, you gotta be careful when you're buying them. If you think you're gonna spend $25 and get a five port USB, it, yeah, okay, it'll work with like thumb drives and stuff like that, sure will. It won't work with displays. You have to, it's gonna cost money, probably between 85 and $125 for a good internal USB extender because the USB extender needs to have a single channel for each hub. When you get one of the cheaper ones, you have one channel on five hubs, it splits it all off and it doesn't jive with this and it won't work. So I'm just gonna give everybody a little heads up on that. You may just wanna, get a good external USB hub like I, I ended up picking up was a Cerberant. Cerberant, that's what I think it was one of the other YouTubers. It was one of the other YouTubers that recommended it and it worked fantastic. Once you, once you have this hardware and software installed in your game, what drove me crazy is I couldn't get it working. Everything was backwards, things blink. Come to find out, ever, you're using this hardware and software. Be when you start the game, or right before you start the game, you have to reset. It's like four clicks. It gives you a list of things. Uh, main monitor, game monitor, and, and so on. It brings you down a list, and it realigns everything. When you start the game, it'll work. I just selected now the F-16, and right now I have the F-16 panels up. Now, of course, the 18's different, but the number pad, you know, the... IFF and as far as the displays go everything's pretty much identical so I can use it with the F-16 I can also use it with the Warthog of course it's made for the 18 it's it's one for one it works awesome with that I just wanted to show people that it can be used with multiple planes it can also be used with the F-15 and the new F-15 coming out all the buttons may not line up perfect but they do work you can work around it because in between each button here and what I'll do is I can show you how it works it does work oh it's paused I can't get anything okay if I unpause it I could switch through the screens but in between these buttons there's little black separators I thought they were separators in between well those separators are actually buttons you can push them in and you can use them and you can assign them you can bind everything together now, with the new update that Win Wing put out, I think it was probably maybe a month ago, you can go into the SIMAP program, you can select an F-16, you can select a Warthog, you can select uh, an F-15, and you can bind. There will be, be pre-programmed. There's people out there that will upload their, their profile, and like even Win Wing has one on there that says Win Wing. Win Wing, one for one, basically, it's exactly what would be in that plane. They programmed it as possibly as close as you can get some of these displays to work with the F-15, the F-16. This worked perfect. I get a little bit confused with some of the labels. They're different, but that's okay. You can work through it because you can get 80% of this you can use with that. And it works great. I was worried about the brightness not being good enough with the 18, um, but it, but it's good. So I think they may have fixed that because I know I've seen a couple videos where people weren't too happy with they weren't bright enough. You couldn't see anything in there. Another thing that I found that's pretty cool is you can get that original green look or you can change some of your displays. In your displays, you can change the colors to be a little bit different. You can go with green. You can go with like a bluish look. You can go with a white. You can change things up. On that side, for the inventory, I like to keep it white, a bright white. On this side, I can change all this to like a brighter fluorescent type green. But I'm fine with it the way it is. So I kind of wish they would have explained some of that when 
I first bought this stuff because I really, really came close to going on eBay <laughs> and putting this stuff for sale and just getting rid of it. It was almost to me, I was to the point where why not just touch the pads with my mouse? Screw this. Uh, I was getting so sick of it. And then finally, thank God, I contacted one last person. Like I said, it was uh, John Self on his YouTube channel. And he said he pre-programs his, has to pre-program it, which only takes about 30 seconds. But you have to do it before each game. You have to realign all of your application. Very simple, very quick, and very much worth it. So that's how it looks. I, I think it's a really, really cool setup that they came up with. I hope that they they come up with some new panels like for the middle. It would be nice if they had an F16 one or even an A10. I think an F16 would be a really good seller. You know, you have the two knobs on each side that we, 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 roll back and forth. Um, it, yeah, it's it's definitely different. I'm sure when Wing has their, their hands full with everything that they're doing now. But anyways, that's what you have to do. You have to get that special display link program you line up your two or three displays have to go under your main screen. If you leave them up like where you got one, two, three, four, five in a line, in a row of monitors showing when you're doing your display link, basically it's like display on your windows when you open it up and it has your windows display and it shows different monitors. If you leave them all lined up in one row, it won't show up right. You have to drag them over and you have to put them like three underneath the main. I like to put two and then pull the middle one down with the 18. So it's kind of almost in the same thing, but to be honest with you, that's just a preference. You can leave all three underneath the main display and it still works fine. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to give me a thumbs up or a like. If you have any questions, I'm not one of those people that won't answer you back. I will answer you back. You, you ask me a question, I will read it. I will get back to you. Other than that, y'all have a great day. Peace.